We now finish with two statements about proof by contradiction and two considerations about how you might want to use them. The first off is, why is proof by contradiction good? What are the pros of using proof by contradiction? And what are the cons of using proof by contradiction? So the benefits are that it gives you two things to work with. Proof by contradiction allows you to work with both P and not Q. Typically having more things to work with is better. Second, often proofs by contradiction are quite short. So there's less chance to make an error and uh, you can see exactly what's going on. There are some downsides to using proof by contradiction though. The major one is that proofs by contradiction are not constructive. So for example, in Euclid's proof of infinitely many primes, it doesn't actually tell you how to make large prime numbers. It just tells you that they have to exist. The second is that it's not always clear what contradiction you should be aiming for. So you're trying to construct a contradiction, but sometimes you end up just spinning your wheels trying to find something to contradict, and this can make for some messy or confusing proofs. Um, it's especially bad if um, a person who's writing the proof doesn't check all of their steps carefully, and they make a contradiction because they made an error in writing, not because of, it's a logical error. So as a general rule of thumb, uh, we try to stay away from proofs by contradiction, um, unless it's absolutely necessary. But of course you can use proof by contradiction, that's fine. So what techniques should you use when you're trying to prove an implication? In general, um, these are the three pieces of advice I would give. A direct proof is good for definition unwinding proofs. A contrapositive proof is very similar to the direct proof, but it's used when not Q and not P are easier to work with. And what do I mean by this? Well, X plus Y equals zero is much easier to work with than X plus Y not equal to zero. We'd rather work with the first statement. Equality is easier to work with than inequality. Finally, contradiction. Proof by contradiction is good for statements of the form, no weird things exist. And the idea is that if things are sufficiently weird, then assuming that that thing exists should produce a contradiction. For example, in the there is no number that is both even and odd proof, that would be very weird if there existed a number that was both even and odd. And it's so weird, in fact, that it produces a contradiction. So whenever you see a statement of the form no weird things exist, proof by contradiction might be what you want. One exercise before we're finished. What technique of the three should you use to prove these statements? The square root of two is irrational. For every real number, if that number is positive, then its square is positive. And for every real number, if x squared is greater than zero, then x is not equal to zero. Take a moment to think about which technique would you use to prove each of these three statements and why. For the first one, I would use proof by contradiction. A number is rational if it's p over q for some integers p and q. And to be irrational is to say that thing doesn't exist. So if you're trying to prove that no weird things exist, you should maybe try contradiction. For the second one, this is an example of where a direct proof would be perfectly well suited. Assuming that x is positive is a natural assumption, and from that you can conclude x squared is greater than zero by using inequality stuff. For the third one, this is an example where we would want to use contrapositive. x not equal to zero is harder to work with than x equals zero. And you'll see that if you use x equals zero and you use the contrapositive, this proof will be one line. Finally, let's take some time to reflect. What types of proofs are constructive 
and which types of proofs are non-constructive. What are the advantages and dis disadvantages of both types of proof? What are some reasons why you might want to use proof by contradiction? And what are some reasons you might want to avoid it? Thank you very much and have a good day.